Hey guys, so it's the Dunkin' Donuts. <clears throat> well, I got, I think I got a uh, Jinx letter or something. I looked up that Yell Ellen fan page and she didn't have many fans, so it's probably a hoax. It's a terrible hoax though, I'll tell you that much. So, that just kind of, somebody tried to piss in my cornflakes as I say to Maureen. I got all excited. <laughs> Thought maybe it was true. I don't know. I'll have to call the Ellen people and see. <laughs> oh no, I, I was kind of excited about it. But. That's how I roll. Mm. What was I talking about last? Oh, I was trying to tell Sarah I had a real breakthrough. I don't know if any of my friends out there are therapists, maybe, you know, can analyze me, I guess. You know, I just want my children to be happy and, you know, love from their whole heart, and, you know, and give it their best. It, it don't matter how many times you fall, as long as you pick yourself back up and start walking up that hill again, you know, that story of my life, two steps forward, one step back. But, you know, you got to take what God gives you. To make the best of it, you know. I always look for the positive in things, you know. That's how I am. You know, there's beauty all around you. You just have to open up your eyes and see it. All I want for my kids is them to follow their dreams. You know, Adam wants to become an RN. She's an LPN and if I ever come into money, she's going back to school because that's her dream. She she has a good heart. Um, she's very caring and compassionate and she is an excellent nurse. She has the patience and kindness and she's good. I wish, you know, she'd come to Florida and have her own practice. I dream of Zoe being a doctor and me, Anna, you know, I'd like to go to school and be a, um ostomy caregiver. I forget what it's called, but they fit you with ostomy supplies. I would like to go back to school. I'm reading my math books, trying to pass my, just to get my prereqs. Somebody said to me, well, why are you going to college now, 54? Why not? I've always wanted a college degree, you know. I've always wanted to be a photographer, you know, nature. I really wanted to be a flight attendant, server in the sky, because I wanted to travel. I just thought they lived this glorious lifestyle. Unbeknown, they live in hotels and, you know, stale air from the airplane. And you have to be on call, you know. My sickness held me back from that. But it would have been nice. I don't know. And then I was into art. I love art. I like science.
So I'll tell you what, I had a real breakthrough out there today. I feel good, it's off my chest. If he sees it, he sees it, you know. There's your apology letter. Where's mine for ripping me off at the house? We didn't have that many bills and he sold the house for 138000 and told me there was no sale, no profit. We just paid off debts. I, I do find that hard to believe because I talked to my brother, Freddie, and he said people in California do it all the time to their spouses. Did he do my dirty? I don't know. I'll never forget, though, the day in court. He said, you'll be nothing without me. And I said, yeah, motherfucker, watch and see. Excuse my language, but that's what I said. And I pointed. Yeah, motherfucker, watch and see. It's unlikely like to cuss like that, but that's what I said. Ain't nobody going to tell me I'd be nothing without them. I'll be everything without you. I wish him no harm. I really don't. He's the only one of my exes that I do, do not talk to. All the exes I've ever been with, I'm friends with. Dave. Kenny. Not my quaint. He's a, he's a person that holds grudges, and like I said, he has a grudge against his sister. He don't even talk to his own sister, and she took him and Anna in when we were going through the divorce, you know, and they don't even talk. He don't talk to his brother Bill out in Colorado, or his cousin Jay and Ellen. He just like, I don't know. I heard he don't talk to Kenny Pollard. You know, him, Kenny, and Bob, they were all best friends. They all, you know, worked at the paint shop. Mike was the mechanic. Bob was the body man. And Kenny was the painter. I love them guys. I grew, you know, well, I grew up. Well, Bob Hoffman lived two doors up from me. And I didn't meet Kenny Pollard until when I started um, going to Suburban Paint Shop on Bella Road. That's where I spent my afternoon, Suburban Paint Shop. <laughs> I had three donuts. I know it's not a good dinner, but that's my sweet for tonight. It's 9-11. They said the lobby closes at 9.45. I had a busy day. I'm so glad that I got the one thing accomplished is sending that letter to Debbie Morris. That's the lady that I rent it from. Anybody wants to see the letter, just, you know, you got to message me. I'll be more than happy to share it with people because she mentally abused me. And what had happened was she was on Social Security Disability. So, what ha you know, she kept telling me if I hit her back, she would... Um, report me for elderly abuse. Well, I've never been in trouble with the law in my whole life. No, that's not true. Um, when I was 14, me and my friend was on a hill drinking Boone's Farm and they
told us to go home. They were going to tell my mom or something. I don't know. It was in Essex or Nicholson Road. Got caught drinking Boone's Farm. Oh my God, you guys remember that stuff? So, you know, I didn't want to get in trouble and I didn't hit her back. If I was in my right mind, I would have. I'll tell you that right now, but mentally, she abused me mentally. She kept saying that, um, I, I swear to God, I think she gave me a nervous breakdown. I, I, I just, I think that's what happened. I don't know. I wasn't myself that whole year. I just wasn't. Maybe I would have been better off going, staying, going out to California with my brother and his wife. I had everything ready. I sold my laptop to Kenny for the plane ticket. And uh, his son was going to sell my car. I had it all ready. And I was just going to fly out there. That was the worst year of my life, I think. What an experience, 2019. If you follow me on my channel, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I sent the letter certified mail today. She has to sign for it. Gave her the list of items that are there. You know, it's my mother's amethyst ring that her brother gave her. And my pearl earrings she wrote, that Kenny bought me when I became a supervisor at Sam's Club. You know, they are all gifts. My pearl bracelet, my pearl ring, you know, my citizen's watch. It was the first thing I ever bought myself. The very first thing. And, and you know, it's a diamond um, watch. 32 diamonds, it's a citizen, so you don't need batteries, and I love it. I wore it every day to work. <coughs> it's the very first thing I bought myself. So it means something to me, but it's a, it's just a thing. But my coin collection, I have a Jefferson Nickel coin collection that's up to date that Pop gave me. You know, she has that at her house. You know, I started a coin collection for my grandchildren. That belongs to my grandson, Cole. Not her. She was, oh my God, she was manipulative, crazy. She would bust through my bedroom door and invade my privacy, you know, because it's her house, I don't know. I paid her rent every month, but she wouldn't write me a receipt because she's on social security. But lo and behold, I have it all on videotape that I paid her every month. It was only three times that I paid her extra. She said I brought fleas to her house. Well, my last place, I we didn't have fleas. So I don't know how she got fleas. Fleas can come from anything. She, I mean, her house is in the woods. She blamed me for everything. Everything. Oh my God, one time she had me like this. In her kitchen up against the wall, step with a knife pointed at me, at my throat. Literally, I have a, I have, see this scar on my thumb? That's from her, it's a, it looks like a T. That's from her. I put my hand in a cup that was broken and I didn't know it was broken. She th um, stabbed my big toe with a screwdriver. I have toenail polish on, but I have a bruise on my left great toe. Uh, she'd do this and say, come here, let me knock the rest of them rotten fucking teeth out. And she said I lost my teeth because I was a drug addict. She um, kept saying, oh my God, when I was in the hospital one time, she told the nurse that I had head lice. And the nurse had to come in and at, literally check my head for head lice. I said, I don't have head lice. Because she, her head was itching. 
Holy cow, I, I mean nuts. She bitch about everything because I didn't make dinner. I would get food stamps and I would spend my entire food stamps on that house. But she would tell all her friends that I never bought food. Yeah, I bought sweets too. Of course, I got a sweet tooth. I brought French vanilla creamer, coffee, you know. One day she had a fit. She, she talks terrible about her sister, Kathy. I mean, really, really bad. And, but then she, you know, I guess it's her sister, you know, she calls her drunk and all kinds of, hey, it calls her drunk and everything. She even called my sister Maureen a drunk, drunk because she drank a Captain Morgan and Coke once. She called her a drunk. I mean, names don't hurt me. It really doesn't. It's like the old sticks and stones things, but she went through all these receipts from, she said her sister Kathy took all the mom's money and, you know, I, I know why she's abusive because she has pain. She sees a psychiatrist, but he only gives her pills and don't really sit and talk to her. She said the psychiatrist told me that this, I was stressing her or something. She was stressing herself. She take, um, what's it called? Um, anxiety medicine. I forget what it was called, though. Not Valium. I don't know what it was. She gave me a couple sometimes, you know, when I needed it. I had anxiety. It's before the doctors. She went to my doctors and talked bad about me. Now, that's doctor on um, patient... Um, confidentiality, so. I don't know. She she was young. One time, one day I was calling Social Security, and she's screaming in the background. She made me feel like an idiot, you know, talking to my lawyer or my long-term disability or Social Security even, you know. I totally lost my sense of direction when I lived there. I would literally think I had a nervous breakdown. Something happened that day when I said I couldn't breathe and call 911. Something happened to me. Oh, that's what I was gonna tell you earlier. The nearest surgeon, it was the only doctor that listened to me. Cause I said, I'm not normal. I never forget numbers, you know, especially my children's phone number and address and you know, my sisters, no way. But I did. Well, the one time I went to the hospital and I told them, I said, I'm, I don't feel safe living there. And they got me a bus ticket. They were working on it, but Debbie got the, I didn't know it, but she got the hospital code to check in with the nurses and find out my status. She said she was relieving the message to my kids. She harassed the hell out of my children. You can ask any of my sisters, Dee, Maureen, they all know how she is on the phone. She would make, one time she told them, oh, I'm eating good. She'd send them pictures of her plate and I'm eating good. I never ate all that food. I was 118 pounds when I came to North Carolina. Yeah, I'm happy now. I'm 140. I just weighed myself yesterday at the doctor's. So I'm gaining weight, which is good. I do wish I can get rid of this double chin now. Gotta go and do exercises. I don't know. So my niece texted me this morning and said, Auntie, <clears throat> I might be coming to Charlotte and I said oh come on come and you know you can stay at Aunt Mars Charlotte's not too far from us so I'd be really happy to see her oh, that's my sister Kathy's daughter God bless her she got lost a little along the way a little bit Poor girl, she lost her brother. Then she lost my sister, her best friend, and 
you know, she quite didn't know how to deal with it. And everybody grieves differently. You know, I know how I was when I lost my mom. It's tough. You know, your mom is, your mom is your root, you know. It's your ground holder. It's, you know, your best friend as, when you're older. I don't know if my kids feel that way about me, but no, I don't think they do. I mean, I can guarantee the minute I see Sarah, she's going to make me laugh because that's how she is. And then Anna, she, you know, I love her. What she does, she makes me laugh. Mm, my kids, they're just everything to me. I love them so much. I hope I'm always in their heart, you know, just when I should die, just, I hope they, I hope they know that, you know, I'm, I'm around them. Maybe, I don't know. Things I do, like, I love cooking with my kids and baking cookies. We, when they were growing up in school, and if they had good grades, I would let them stay home with me. I, I didn't do them both because I wanted to have individual time with them. So, you know, Anna would stay home from school and we'd bake cookies all day and have, you know, and then me and Sarah would do it. And we'd have that, um, you know, like girl time. So it's just fun. God, I miss my kids. I. I really need to see them. And I'm not just talking about Facebook or whatever. I need to see them in real life. I need to see my grandkids. I missed my flight, you know, because I was sick in the hospital. God knows I, I love to come up by their birthdays because it's special to me. You know, they're a gift from God. And I like to celebrate their life. And like my grandkids, I used to tell them stories, Cole and Brandon. The little ones don't know yet because I haven't been around them. But Cole and Brandon, they always used to say, Mimi, tell me a story. Tell me a story. So I would just tell them stories about, you know, me and Cole, we always went um, down Blueberry River, you know. And then Brandon always said, Mimi... When you get old, I'm going to drive you around like driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> he said, so you don't have to drive. I'm going to be your chauffeur. And I said, oh, Brian, that's nice. <laughs> oh, I miss them. You know, I just, I just wish that they knew how much I loved them and miss them. And I, I hope one day Cole and Brandon read my book and to know the truth about how Mimi felt and you know I loved them since the minute they were born even before then oh my god Cole he made me a grandmom he made me a Mimi Coley moly Coley oh god I'm 17 now can you believe it no I'll be 17 this year and Brian he, he just turned 16 sweet 16 I bet you he's a good-looking kid, both of them. Cole looks like his dad, and Brandon looks like... Actually, Brandon looks like Hannah. <laughs> he's so cute. I always wonder if Brandon still has eczema and... um. What's it, what's it called? Eczema and uh, something he had. I, I had to give... When he was a baby, um, I had to give him not vitamin D milk, the other soy milk. Because he, he had um, eczema really, really bad. Oh, poor kid. We used to have to wrap his wrist up because he would scratch him so much. I often wonder if they think about me because, you know, they think about me like they don't want to have contact with me according to their adoptive father. You know, it's not in the best interest of them. And I understand if they don't want to, you know, have a relationship with me, I understand, you know. Maybe one day they will. Maybe one day they'll pick up my book or, you know, and read it and realize, you know, 
because I have emails from their adoptive father in one particular incident we were talking about the baby blankets because I have baby blankets for all my grandchildren except for Zozo and um and then he he said to me but well, what do you tell the people and I was like what do you mean what do I tell the people you know these are my grandchildren's blankets this is what I used to swaddle them in you know I'm going to tell my grandchildren it's going to be a quilt one day but you know I swaddled you in this and I rocked you and you know this is your baby blanket for me and one day when you're grown you can have it I was going to mail Coles and Brandon's to them two years ago and I thought maybe it would give them comfort but then they came out with them weighted blankets so I didn't send it. I had a package. I, I I brought the package to Maryland for somebody to mail because they lived in Cumberland. And instead, Anna sends it back. Or she got rid of it at her house or something. I got it back, so it came back to Florida with me. And um, it never got mailed because I didn't have the funds. I truly did not have the funds. And it was wrong of me to promise them something and not follow through with it. So I felt really bad. And while in Florida and while in Maryland, we spoke to them Christmas time. That was the last time I've seen them live. I think we was at Anna's house and videotaped. I got to take this out. It's making my head hurt. I think, it, I think they're going to clean the dining room. But right, we'll talk again. What time is it? Oh, it's 9.30. Got 15 more minutes, but man, sometimes you just need to take stuff out of your hair and let it go. I'm gonna sleep good tonight. You know, I feel really good inside my heart. I felt like I got cleansed of something from crying today. Cry you know, I couldn't cry for a whole year my eyes were so dried up I could not cry even though I was crying inside when I was at Debbie's I was literally crying inside but I couldn't cry real tears so you know what I'm glad I can cry now because it's good healing and I'm glad I can talk about it you know I think that's how therapy should work you just talk it over write it down journal something keep a grateful journal you know, I'm grateful each day, I swear to, just that I can wake up and see. You know, instead of complaining, oh, I have glasses. Well, at least I have eyeballs, you know. I'm not one to complain. At least I can see. Okay, they're getting ready to...